No matter how good your offense is in the NBA, you need a defense to win a championship. Because without the ability to stop other players, you're just going to get completely destroyed. So in today's video, we are minimizing every player in the NBA's defense so that we only have an offensive game and pretty much whichever team is the best on offense is going to go ahead and win this season. So it's going to be interesting to see how the NBA is without defense. This was actually pretty easy to do though. I just came into all players here, went into quick edit, selected every player's defense, and then just lowered it all the way. So everything that we've minimized to the absolute lowest that can go, the lowest in NBA 2K20 is actually 25. You can't get it all the way down to zero, which is a little unfortunate. It'd be cool if you could have zero defense, but we have lowered interior defense, perimeter defense, steal, block, lateral quickness, help defense IQ, pass perception, and defensive consistency. So that's all of the defensive attributes in NBA 2K20. And as you can see, they are all at 25. And if we go over, we're on all players right now. If we go over here and switch, the top rated players are completely different. Now at the top of the NBA, we have James Harden, who was tied for the highest overall previously but he actually only went down three overalls when we got rid of his defense obviously he's not known for being one of the best defenders in the league Doncic is now the second highest overall player lebron is still up there surprisingly only going down a few overalls we got curry durant uh, but previously we had guys like Giannis and Kawhi leonard in the top five players and they are no longer there Giannis is just out of the top five and then if we scroll down, you can kind of see there's a lot of guards, some great offensive guards, players that aren't really known for their defense up at the top here. Anthony Davis went down quite a bit. Kawhi's now an 86 overall. They gave him a one plus boost. Normally he's a 96. So he actually went down 10 overalls when we got rid of his defense. Uh, Paul George went down a ton as well. All in all, every player went down in overalls, but some took a bigger hit than others. If we take a look at some of the best defensive players in the league, checking out Jimmy Butler, he's now a 79 overall. Rudy Gobert is a 77. Drew Holiday is now only a 74 overall. I believe he went down over 10 overalls. He was the top player on his team, but now he's the fifth best player on his team. Going over to the Warriors here, Clay went down quite a bit. And then Draymond Green is now only a 71 overall. So some of the best defenders in the league that maybe don't have as much offensive skill it definitely took a huge hit right here and they're not going to be the same players that they once were and they won't be as dominant in the league without their defense another guy is danny green on the la lakers i mean he's more of a three and d guy so if you get rid of that d he's now only a 69 overall so i want you guys to leave your comment down below guess which team you think is actually going to do the best in the nba now that there is no defense, I think the Rockets are going to do a lot better with Harden and Westbrook. I think if you get rid of their defense, they should be able to do quite a bit better. But let's just get right into a simulation here and find out which team does the best. We're in my league. We got injuries off. We got trades off. And we're just going to simulate through a season. Find out what happens in the NBA when there is no defense. Okay, so we made it to the end of the season. And if you're just looking at Giannis's stats right now, 42 points per game. You can kind of see how this season went. Players scored so many points. Giannis the MVP with 42 points. He also shot 40% from the three-point line, which is pretty crazy. And then, of course, the defensive stats, steals, blocks are just super low. Rookie of the year goes to Zion Williamson, who averaged 30 points as a rookie. Of course, we had injuries off for the season. Schroeder, sixth man of the year, he also averaged 30 points. Players that normally don't get anywhere close to these points these averages are just going off right now defense player went to Giannis uh, which doesn't matter too much because I mean he still had 0.9 steals per game which is pretty good for having 25 steal stats most improved player went to Donovan Mitchell he averaged 44.6 points per game I believe he was the top scorer in the NBA and then coach of the year gonna go to the Bucks head coach Mike Budenholzer Checking out the all NBA teams on the first team, we got Donovan Mitchell, Kyrie, Giannis, LeBron, and Joel Embiid. Normally, we would not see Donovan Mitchell on there, but he took over for the Jazz 
when there is no defense. Second team, we got Curry, Harden, AD, Durant, and Cat. And then the third team, we got Trey Young, Devin Booker, Kawhi, Porzingis, and Vucevic. So a lot of players we would normally see on these lists, but then other, uh, like we wouldn't normally see Porzingis on this list. All defensive first team. The crazy thing about this is that the players that were good defensively before are still on this team, despite that they have all of the same stats. Their IQ and stats and everything is all the same. Maybe it's because of the tendencies, but they still make the all defensive first team, which is a little weird. And then here's the rookie teams. Uh, checking out the stats now, some players got like plus one boost to their defense, so they're one attribute better, but it's still pretty awful. Uh, but a lot of players overalls changed quite a bit. They got a lot better offensively. Uh, look how many players have 99 layup. That's actually pretty crazy. But if we come over here to league leaders, Donovan Mitchell was our lead scorer, 44.6 points per game. That is insane for today's NBA. Obviously, the only person who did better was Will Chamberlain. Giannis had 42. Kyrie and Durant were in the top five, 38 and 37. So a lot of players could have done a lot better, but they actually shared the ball a lot between all teams. Like there's going to be multiple players with 30 points per game on these teams, even players that weren't great before. They're still going to score 30 points. So the players at the top, if they just hogged the ball the whole season, they would have scored like 70 points per game, but it was distributed pretty well between players. We got LeBron and AD together, both the 37, Curry, Trey Young, Harden, and Devin Booker all in the top 10. Let's see how many players scored over 30. So 17 players had over 30 points per game, which is just insane. And then I think rebounds per game, rebounds per game, I guess it's still around the same i want to see how players shot though see if it's higher than normal ben simmons shot 30 percent three point percentage kyle korver shot 57 percent there's so many players over 50 percent field goal percentage so with no defense these guys are shooting a lot better they pretty much just gotta hit their wide open shots and I mean, those are still pretty hard to make. You can't make every single one. Checking out the standings. Standings, I guess, aren't too different because the teams that are at the top of the NBA right now, their top players are great at offense and defense. So we still got the Bucks on top, 76ers, Celtics, Nets, Wizards actually doing a lot better. Of course, they do have John Wall back as well. And for some reason, he is backing up Isaiah Thomas that does not make a lot of sense pistons pacers and magic all make playoffs unfortunately my raptors do not end up make it in there i mean they do have a great defense they're not as strong offensively and then if we come to the bottom here new york knicks still at the bottom right here um, so nothing changing right there coming over to the west we got the lakers up on top then the rockets nuggets clippers spurs are doing a lot better now that they got rid of defense, they have some pretty good offensive players in DeRozan and Aldridge. Warriors, Trailblazers, and Suns all making playoffs. And then the worst team in the West was actually the OKC Thunder. I guess Chris Paul didn't do too great uh, because Dennis Schroeder is actually averaging 30 points per game, which is pretty crazy. Another thing I want to check out here is NBA records. I want to see if players actually beat some single season records and then even game records so coming over to season here we got a few people up on the top here donovan mitchell is now second for most points in a single season with 3655 still a ways off wilt chamberlain's 4000 points uh but that's the best you can do then we got Giannis, lebron ad Kyrie and trey young all making it up there as well so we got wilt and jordan the only two survivors Field goals made. We're going to have a few players on here as well. Three pointers made is all players this season. Stephen Curry beating his records. 500 three pointers in a single season. Trey Young, Harden, Kyle Lowry, Donovan Mitchell, Damian Lillard, Devin Booker getting up there as well. So, so many players getting these three point records. Free throws are actually not going to change. I mean, I guess that makes sense. And then, yeah, nothing else is going to go up there. Maybe assists. So we got one player, Ricky Rubio, making it up there for assists. And that's going to be the only player for that. I thought more people would have got a crazy amount of assists this season, but I guess not. And then, of course, the defensive stats aren't going to change. 
coming over to games now. Nobody beating any of the records for points in a game. There's a lot of players that were close. I think Donovan Mitchell dropped 66. Even three pointers made in a season was not beat. We had a few players up there. Harden, Lowry, and Zach Levine all had 13. So they're close to getting that three pointers made record, but we're just one shy. And then no more records actually being beat here. Okay, so if we go over to game highs right here, Donovan Mitchell did have the most points in a season with 71 points. He dropped the one game. We're just going to hop into the playoffs now, see what team ends up winning the NBA championship. Usually it does go to the LA Lakers. Let's see if things change a little bit now that there is no defense involved. Of course, the Lakers got some great offensive players in LeBron and Anthony Davis. So out of the first round, we actually only had one upset, and that was the Warriors beating out the Denver Nuggets. And it makes sense how they could upset them. I thought the Warriors would, would have been one of the top teams. You got Curry, Clay, and D'Angelo Russell, all scoring machines. Uh, they can put up a crazy amount of points. And then I guess the Spurs also upset the LA Clippers. The LA Clippers are a great defensive team, not as strong offensively. So they did not do nearly as well as they would in real life. And we got some crazy upsets here. Starting off the Brooklyn Nets beating out the Bucks four to three. The Celtics beat the 76ers. And then in the West, the Spurs beating the Lakers four to two. They make the Western Conference Finals. I was not expecting that at all. I mean, the Spurs are just killing it offensively, I guess. Let's see which two teams are going to make the NBA Finals. So it's going to be the Nets facing off against the Rockets in the NBA Finals. These are some of the best offensive players in the NBA as well. Let's just get into the Finals. The Rockets taking a 2-1 lead here. The Rockets with a 3-1 lead. And the Nets are going to get another game, winning 153 to 143. Let's actually check this out. Westbrook had 43 points this game. And then Kyrie had 38, Durant with 27. Hopping into game number six here, the Rockets up three to two, and they're up by three points. Kevin Durant at the free throw line right now. We got a pretty high scoring game, 141. Two, one, 40, and Durant actually had three shots. He ties it up right here. So we might be going to an overtime in this game. Let's see what the Rockets are going to do on offense. Obviously, we got no defense, so all they have to do is kind of hold out to the last second and go in for an easy layup because if there's no defense, no defensive stats, they should be able to score quite easily. So let's see what they end up doing here. They could win it pretty easily. Eric Gordon has the ball for some reason. No James Harden in the game. I'm not sure if he fouled out or what, but Eric Gordon looks like he's gonna be taking the last shot here. He's just gotta get inside and looks like he's gonna opt up for a three for some reason. Getting inside, puts up the tough shot and it is good to go. The Rockets taking a last second lead and the Nets were playing some decent defense right there. But let's see if the Nets can score. They have enough time to put up a shot. You need 0.3 seconds for a shot. So let's see what they can do right here. Let's see who's going to take the last shot as well. I'm guessing it's going to be Durant. And no, it's Karis LeVert. That is no good. And the Houston Rockets going to be your NBA champs right there. With a zero defense in the NBA. You got one of the best offensive, if not the best offensive teams in the NBA. They definitely have the best offensive player in the NBA with James Harden. And James Harden with finals MVP, the best offensive player in the NBA, wins finals MVP when we completely get rid of defense. This is Harden's dream NBA right here. They just decided to not play defense and only offense. Checking out the box score here, uh, you can just see kind of how players scored. We got so many players over 20 points on the Nets. And then for the Rockets, they actually did not do much scoring. Harden with 28, Westbrook with 21. I guess uh, just all around, they did pretty good there. End up getting the W. Checking out Harden's stats. He averaged 33.3, 4.8 rebounds, and 9 assists in the finals there. Ends up winning finals MVP. He's also up to a 95 overall now. That is going to be it for the video, guys. Here is the final playoff simulation of every team. As you can see, it's a lot different than our normal simulations. Normally, it's between the Bucks and 76ers in the East. 
and Lakers and Clippers in the West. Sometimes the Rockets kind of get up there, but they're never able to defeat some of the best teams in the NBA. And then we also had the Spurs making the Western Conference Finals, which never happens. And we usually never get this matchup, Rockets versus Nets in the Finals. So it's kind of nice to see this. But that's the NBA with no defense in NBA 2K20. If you did enjoy the video, make sure that you do smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. This has been your boy Smeekwell, and I'll see you next time. Peace. Sleep as free.